So if you're an RPA developer, knowing how to speed up your process is a must. This is why today we're going to take an example, a process that is already developed, and we're going to try to speed it up, first of all, by using conventional ways, and then we're going to try to push it to the extreme and speed it as much as possible. Hey guys, my name is Reda, and today we are going to see the second video in a series where we take a process, speed it, and then optimize it. Let's jump to my screen. So the example that we are going to use is the RPD challenge. And if you haven't seen the first video where I have created the process, please go back and rewatch it. And now we have the process ready. And all we need to do now is to fast forward. it. First of all, let's run the process just to see how much time it's going to take and have a reference to how much time we should have at the end of this process. So let's run the process. Good, so the process had just finished, and as you can see, it took 77 seconds. That's so much time. So let's go back to UIBAD and start with the modification. The first modification we're gonna make is go to the Use Browser Edge RPD Challenge, and here, go to Properties, go to Properties, and here, change Chromium API to Simulate. That's the first thing. Now. If we are going to follow the first uh, video, I had type into that was in the modern design, but I have changed it to the classical. So even if you're working with the classical design, this tutorial is still gonna help you speed up your process. So normally I only need to change the simulates in here and all of these activities will change. But since I have classic type intos, I have to go to project and go to the gear icon which is the project settings. And here I'm going to go to UI Automation Classic. And here I will go down to Keyboard Events. And I will change the Simulate Type to True. This right here. So let's click on OK. And here for the Click Start, I won't change anything since this is a modern activity. And for the modern activity, the input mode is same as browser. So if we change the browser to simulate, this one is also going to be simulate. We don't have to worry about it. So the clicks, we don't have to worry about them. The type intos, they are in the classical. So we've changed them. Good. Let's rerun the process and see what's going to happen. Go back, click on the reset. And here I will rerun the process. So 48 seconds. So we already won around, let's say 30 seconds, half a minute. So not too bad. Okay. These modifications that I've just made is the type of modifications I will advise you to do in a real world project. So in a production level project, you can do these things, but the things that we are going to do right now. Are not, I'm not going to advise you to do them in production. We don't need to push our process to be the fastest possible, but for the purposes of this example, we got to try and make it the fastest possible. So let's just change the settings in order to have the fastest process possible. First of all, we are going to go back to the project settings. And here under the UI Automation Classic, we're going to change this to zero, the run value, delay before and the delay, delay after. We're going to change this also to zero. So here I'm going to go to the UI automation modder and I am going to do the same thing. So I'm going to change this to zero and then I'm going to change this to zero as well. And wait for ready, I'm going to change it to none and I'm going to go back to UI automation classic and I'm going to change this value to none. So what I did right now is I changed the default values that we have in these properties, the delay before and the delay after, because even if they are uh, empty, they are actually by default have a 200 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds wait. So we're trying to make them zero so it doesn't have to wait for anything. It will just go ahead and write everything uh, at the same time as fast as possible. So let's run the process now and let's see what's going to happen. So as you can see, 
we have four seconds. And because I'm running a lot of things on my machine right now, this actually can go down uh, to two seconds. So because I'm running this on my machine and I have a lot of load, this is why I have four seconds. Let's run it one more time just to see what's going to happen. Same thing, four seconds. Okay, good. So now that we have pushed this process to as fast as it can go, we are going to go back to home and close this process. And I will open up a different process called RPA Challenge by Submission. This is a process that I've already created and it has two activities. The first one is open a browser or use browser. And the second one is an injection of JavaScript. So it only has two activities and it's based on a JavaScript code that we're going to see later on. But before doing this, let's just run the process and see how fast it can go. So let me just go here and click on run file. So the process is already finished. And as you can see, it has finished in 66 milliseconds. So this is the fastest the process can go. And if I'm not running so many things on my machine, this actually can go down to as much as 30 milliseconds. It's the fastest submission I've ever gotten. So uh, yeah, how did we get here? Uh, what code did I use? What approach did I use? And why is it so much different than what we can run in UiPath? So let's see the code that helped me achieve this result. Sorry, we actually found VS code. So this is basically the code and it has two different actions. The first one is a click action. And the second one is a set value. So we will have to click on the button start first. And then we are going to uh, write into every text box. And then we are going to click on the button submit. Now let's see exactly what I've done. The first function is get elements by class, where we are going to find the element with this class. And this element is the start button. So here I have a set timeout. This function is inside a set timeout. And set timeout is basically just to wait for the elements to be shown in the screen by a specific amount of time, which is 200 milliseconds in this case. The second uh, line is basically uh, a document that evaluates where we are going to try and find the element with first name that has first name in it. And then once we find this element, so this, all of this, just to find the element, was once we find it, then we're going to find the tag with the input inside of that parent element. And then we get a set the value of that element to John, for example, in this case. And all of this is going to be inside a set timeout just to wait for the element to be shown in the screen. So let's go back to the website and just understand what does that mean. Let's click on reset. So what we do first using that code is click on start. And then we go to, for example, first name. We try to find the element's first name in the page. And then we go to the second parent of the element where we are going to have all of these elements of first name. And then once we find that element, we go back and find the input. We only have one input inside of that box. And then it's that input where we get change the value. So that's basically it. And I basically repeat the same thing for all elements. As you can see here, I didn't use a loop because if I use a loop, I'm only going to get like 300 to 400 milliseconds. It will not be the fastest possible. So this is why I used an approach where we are just going to feed the data, feed the whole code at once to the JavaScript, and then UiPath will take that JavaScript injection and put it in the website. This is how we're going to go the fastest possible. So there is no way for the loop to go back every time. So this is why I just used basically a code, a raw code, just to have the fastest results possible. And this is actually the fastest results I've ever gotten. I've never seen anyone do it faster than 30 milliseconds. And it's the fastest results I've ever gotten. So, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to go long about this because this is not a JavaScript course. This is a UiPath course, but this is basically, if you want to have the fastest results possible now. Do I recommend to do this in production? Absolutely not. This is not the type of things that you do in production. This is just for fun. When we're trying to push the process to go as fast as it can, 
but this is not something that you want to do in production because sometimes you can crash the website, especially if you are working with some internal applications of your company. So, so that was just basically for fun. And now someone would ask me, I have, I can have 30 minutes seconds using JavaScript and I have four seconds or three seconds using new iPad. That means that JavaScript can have better results in terms of data entry than new iPad. Well, the answer is yes and no, because the things that we can do with UiPath are so much more than JavaScript when it comes to RPA. So UiPath is not only one tool, it's an ecosystem. And once we want to push our process to production, once we want to scale it, once we want to do so many things like scheduling, like uh, maintenance, like all of these things, UiPath will be so much more than just a raw code that we're going to have in JavaScript. So there is no comparison. You cannot compare between JavaScript and UiPath because JavaScript is a programming language and UiPath is an RPA tool. So an RPA tool is always going to be better in terms of automation than a programming language because of the ecosystem and because once we go to production and once we actually want to work on real life project, uh, the RPA tool is going to be always so much better. Now, a different question can come in line. Someone would say, I developed this process using, let's say, SAP IRPA or Automation Anywhere or Power Automate, and I had a better result than UiPath or I had a better result than Blue Prism. Does that mean that Power Automate is better than Automation Anywhere, for example? Also, no. You cannot use the number here. You cannot use the number here as a benchmark. You can never use the number here as a benchmark. Because an RPA tool is so much more than simply some data entry on a dynamic website. It has so much more to it, and we can only compare RPA tools using something that the ease of use, the community, the, uh, the, the user friendliness, the ecosystem, how many things can we do using the RPA tool. So this can never be used as a benchmark. And I've seen so many people do this mistake in LinkedIn, saying that, oh, I have a better result and UiPath then Power Automate, that means that UiPath is better or vice versa, or Power Automate is better than UiPath. That can never be the case. We can never use this as a benchmark. Matter of fact, I don't even want this to be in here. I would like UiPath to just put less than one second between one second and five seconds, uh, five seconds to 10 seconds, etc., etc. This number right here, a lot of people has been using it the wrong way and they have just been trying to benchmark and say that RPA tools are better than the others once they have a better result that is faster using one RPA tool or the other. So please stop comparing RPA tools using this number because it has no meaning and RPA tools are so much more than just data entry. So that was it for me guys. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to take this process and we are going to optimize it and apply some best practices in it. So tune in for that and catch you guys on the next one.